What's going on everybody, it's Frito here for your Overwatch 2 capture point, or assault as it's called in Overwatch. I have criticized quite a bit because it's a very difficult game mode to play. It doesn't translate that well into matchmaking because I think a lot of players don't actually understand what the win conditions of the mode are. But if we take a look at the, how the pros approach the mode, I think it can illuminate for the entire player base to try to be better 2CP players and hopefully we can make 2CP a more fun game mode to play that is as exciting as this pro match between Luminosity and Complexity was on Anubis. LG are going to be in blue and Complexity are going to be in red throughout the entirety of this. The first point that we're looking at here is a dive setup. Now I have said that three DPS picks do make a squad comp, but not in the way that Complexity is playing it here. They actually are using the dive to pinpoint a direct target instead of splitting for duels in the way that Misfits did. This would be what I would call a dive comp, whereas the way Misfits plays with the sniper at different ranges, splitting into different duels, and zoning things is more of the squad comp play style. This is more just straight up dive. Now, the first thing that they did was to go in, get some kills, lose the team fight, and come back out. But the important thing to note is that the respawns that are coming from LG back in the spawn are just getting to there as the fight comes again. So the positioning they have isn't as good as it was when they first were able to set up comfortably. Now, with that chaos, complexity can come back in and fight faster on their own terms, find their frags faster, and snowball this fight even better. And that's the first lesson that we want to learn about 2CP here today. Don't get discouraged with 2CP. The entire premise of the game mode is to go in, have a complete team fight, and then if you lose, come back at it again. You can't get discouraged because you have to constantly be playing this ultimate hokey pokey with the other team where you put your left foot in, you put your right foot out, you do the hokey pokey and eventually you have more ultimates than the other team and then you team wipe them. That's how it works. Now we're watching LG on the attacking side trying to take A themselves. You look at the clock, they only have a minute left here, but they've been failing a few team fights and drawing out the ult economy to the point where they have quite a few ults and now they send a bunch of players of complexity back to respawn. They do trade out and they lose the fight ultimately, and they end up with just their flankers, Tracer and Genji alive against three of the enemy players. Knowing that they can't win the fight from that position, they regroup. And this is very important, knowing when to disengage from a fight. You have to be able to watch the kill feed and count what your man-to-man -man ratio is and know if you have the respawn advantage or not. You don't in this case. You can't simply just dive into the next fight. You have to wait for that regroup to come in. And then since they do, this next fight comes sooner before Complex's reinforcements can get set up once again. And they pop their ults and win the fight easily in a big, quick fight. And that's how you win. You have to have patience to play that hokey pokey game where you're in a fight, you don't think you can win it, you back out, get ready for the next fight, and go in once again quickly with the confidence to take it and just get it done from there. Overwatch can be a very grueling game where it just feels like you're getting stomped and destroyed and destroyed over and over again, but this happens to pro teams too. Fear not, that's just kind of inherent into the game. And you have to keep attacking these objectives with the mindset that knowing that you have to manipulate the ultimate economy in order to win and close out these points. Now we've actually fast forwarded this footage onto LG into the final round with a minute 15 left. They're going in to try to take B. They actually get a huge pick early into the fight. Picking off the enemy team's Ana should be massive for this fight. They go in, but the enemy team is going to have more ults than them. Popping some ults down and they're losing this fight, unfortunately. They do get some trades, but they know. They look up to the kill feed and it doesn't matter that they traded evenly three for three. An even trade on point B is not even. You have to remember Remember that the enemy team spawns right on the objective. So if you go one for one and then end up in a 3v3 extended fight on the objective, that's not a fair fight for you because the respawns of the enemy team are going to be there within 10 seconds. So if you can't wipe those other three players without taking losses yourself within that 10 second time frame, back up, regroup, go for another 6v6 fight and win with the ultimate game because you're very unlikely to just be able to frag out in that situation fast enough because you have a 10 second window to get another kill in order to equalize it yet again before any of those other frags that you just got start to get out of respawn and overwhelm you. Being the last fight, Luminosity knows that they have to use every single resource at their disposal. They go down frags very early in this fight even, but with a combination of the Graviton that hits quite a few targets and Ube on Roadhog who is 
More lethal than ever, mind you. He got a quote-unquote nerf, but for the best Roadhog players in the world, he's more lethal than he was before, as Ube just racks up burst kill after burst kill, and that's exactly what you need on 2CP. Can't just kill things eventually, you have to kill them quick, as fast as possible. So quick, that Luminosity was actually able to get some reinforcements from their spawn to come in to compete with the reinforcements of complexity that spawns right next to the point. Luminosity drops Sound Barrier, and all of a sudden, since they have players and momentum into the fight, dropping ultimates and killing things quickly, they take it over and able to get their fourth point. Now, unfortunately, Luminosity is not going to have any time to get more points, and the win condition is set on Complexity to respond to them to try to tie it. Complexity, veer up this right side and try to take space as fast as they can in avoiding damage. Trades happen quickly and Complexity actually loses this fight. Frito, surely they were too aggressive there. Surely they were playing far too fast. They got out fragged, they got beat, they shouldn't have done that. Nope, the decision was fine. The playstyle was right, the play was wrong. Ticking down to under 20 seconds on the board and they have to touch the point now in order to have a chance. And Luminosity has an ultimate advantage, meaning that it's even scarier to come in. Our blue does get the Graviton off, which sets up Nicholas to get some frags over the top, but Ube on his own far is able to get some kills back. In the middle of the fight, Torque gets Genji, Blade, and slashes up everything as fast as he can. And the speed and execution of this fight is devastating for the defense. And so much was going on there, I'm going to play this clip over. 10 seconds on the board and Complexity is veering up the right side. They know they have to touch point and that's kind of a quick way to get there, knowing that Luminosity wasn't really commanding that space. If they had maybe a Roadhog sitting there waiting to pick off the Fara or a hit scan that was kind of zoning that lane, even a Widowmaker on top left, something that could challenge that angle may have slowed down this push and would have been able to get a pick on Complexity quite early in the fight. But they're able to encroach onto the point and contact is only made once they get to the point able to contest it. Horror Blue dives right up the center in order to try to find some Graviton money, and he gets both healers in it, and Nicholas cleans them up. This is probably the biggest key to the success of this push, is finding the best possible frags very early in the fight when you're down on resources. At the beginning of this fight, they're going up against an Earth Shatter, Nano Boost, and Ube rains justice from above in the middle of the fight, which does get some value, but having no healers alive, LG struggles to keep their players up, and Complexity is able to trade effectively. In the chaos of it all, Shake does go down, but gets Nano Boost off before he does so, which is so key. Allows time for Torque to get Sword and Nicholas to get Barrage, which takes out Luminosity with devastating speed. And that's the key to 2 CP. In order to get any progress on the capture point, you have to get the frags fast. You have to go in, find the openings, and kill them quickly. Far too many times in matchmaking do you see players poking and prodding, holding angles, extending fights for too long. As the attacking team, when your respawn is 10 miles away, you don't have time to be thinking about things for too long. You have to find the opening, go for it immediately, and start making those trades happen. That's how you play 2CP. And although this mode is incredibly frustrating for me to play personally in matchmaking, I think the pros show us how exciting this mode can be. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Do you share the same struggles that I have with 2CP trying to get players in matchmaking to play anything like this pro game that we just watched? It's understandable because this mode is incredibly difficult to play, but you have to know from moment to moment what your win condition is and be patient when it's time to be patient and be incredibly aggressive when you have to be. Once the initiation of that fight starts, you have to be in it and committed fully, otherwise you can easily let some of your teammates be left out to dry if they're committing fully and you're not. The focus fire and trades need to happen immediately because slow frags just extend the fight forever so that the defense never dies. It is much, much better for the attack to win or lose the fight quickly. So you can manage your ultimate economy, try to pull their ults out, and you don't get stuck in these extended poke battles that just charge the defensive ults and never get you any progress on the checkpoint. The executions have to be this quick, otherwise the fact that they spawn on the objective point is going to haunt you. I hope this video was helpful in any way, and if it was, please hit the like button if you did enjoy. Subscribe for more. We upload each and every day. You're going to want to hit the bell icon to make sure you join the notification squad. Speaking of notifications, check out our Twitch page, and be sure to set up email notifications so you can see when our streams go live. Follow us on Twitter for stream announcements, updates, ramblings about the game from me, and other cool clips we get while playing. Check out our Discord server, which is the biggest Overwatch Discord server there is. Come on in, make yourself at home, take your shoes off. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.